So, what's the difference between the Connie Corso and the Bauble? Well, in today's video, we're going to find out. Welcome to The Canine Show. If we're just meeting, my name's Will. I'm the founder and CEO of Fenrir Canine Products. And on this channel, I make videos just like this one to educate people all about these amazing dog breeds. So, if you are new here, please consider subscribing. Now, every time I compare a Connie Corso to one breed, I get requests to compare them to another breed. And the current most requested one that people keep wanting to know is how they differ from the Bauble. And as always, I'm more than happy to answer the questions you guys have. So let's get into breaking down the differences between the Connie Corso and the Bauble. And it's no secret that the Connie Corso is one of my favourite breeds on the planet. And although they look pretty similar to the Bauble, they are two completely different dogs. And we'll start with the differences in their looks, and let's start by talking about their coats. It's a common misconception that all Connie Corsos are black and all baubles are fawn. Whereas in fact, the Connie Corso can be black, plum, uh, grey, slate grey, uh, light fawn, deer fawn and dark fawn. And the bauble can be all shades of fawn, red and brown, as well as black, brindle, Irish marked and piebald. Now, when it comes to their size, this is where things get much clearer, as the bauble is significantly bigger than the Corso, weighing anywhere between 70 and 90 kilos, which is around 150 to 200 pounds, whereas the Connie Corso averages around 50 to 60 kilos, which is 110 to 130 pounds. Like I discussed in my differences between the Connie Corso and the Bull Mastiff video, it is worth noting at this point that there are larger specimens of Connie Corso that breeders and owners like to boast about, but they've most likely had Great Danes added in their bloodlines to give them that boost. However, what's interesting is that they are both fit in a very similar height range. Therefore, that weight difference is mostly on the bulk and the thickness of the bauble compared to the more leaner, athletic Connie Corso. Both dogs do have interesting histories, and I'll skim through the Connie Corsos for the new viewers, then take a look at the baubles in a bit more detail. The Connie Corso comes from breeds native to Italy, which were very much mastiff type breeds of the old Roman war dogs that boasted a renowned reputation for being strong, courageous, and loyal. In ancient Roman times, these Connie Corsos accompanied legions into battle and on their expeditions into foreign lands, which is included here in Britain. It was in Britain that the Romans found native dogs that they took back to Italy with them and which they crossed with their own native dogs, which are thought to be responsible for the undershot jaw of the Connie Corso and the origin for the breed that we see today. The Bauble, however, shares an identical lineage to the Bull Mastiff, who was born and raised here in England before quickly spreading around the world due to its famed guarding skills. Gamekeepers wanted a large powerful dog to help them keep poachers at bay and they mix Mastiff breeds of the day and the old English Bulldogs to produce the Bull Mastiff. And one of the places they spread to due to their guarding prowess was South Africa to help protect the diamond mines. These Bull Mastiffs were then bred with native dogs such as uh, in South Africa to create the Boar Bull which translates to Farmer's Mastiff in Afrikaans. So we know about each dog's lineage and we've looked at their appearances, but as you guys know, I always focus much more on the temperament, intelligence and ease of training, as well as things like energy levels to determine which breed is suitable for what person and what lifestyle. So we'll go through each one as it's these things that you should pay especially close attention to to help determine if one is right for you. We'll start with the Connie Corso's temperament, which is known to be reliable, trustworthy and loyal, and they form those extremely deep, fond, strong bonds with their families, becoming totally devoted to them. It's worth pointing out here that Connie Corso's, although deeply bond with the family, are known to have especially strong ties to one person in the family, and that's usually the person that feeds and trains them. And if spent alone away from that person for long periods of time, they can suffer from quite severe separation anxiety. They do have an extremely strong protective instinct for their loved ones, yet show them complete kindness and are completely affectionate with them at the same time. One of the reasons that many families absolutely swear by the breed is due to this combination of kind gentleness and sheer devotion and protection. They tend to be a little bit aloof and wary when they're around people they don't know, but would rarely show any sort of aggression towards a stranger. They just like to keep their distance and just let you know that they're around if needed. Once they get to know somebody, they're also genuinely fine around them. 
So if you are meeting a Connie Corso for the first time, I always recommend just to make sure you're nice and patient and relaxed and let them do their thing until they're comfortable with you. And then that way, at that point, you can start giving them some force and start to build your relationship with them. They also don't have a strong prey drive, which is good if you have other animals in the area. And they don't tend to wander much and they just prefer to stay kind of around their home and much closer to their loved ones. Now the Bauble's temperament is one of extreme self-confidence, independence and zero fear. It's these skills that make them such excellent guardians of farms in South Africa, but it's also these skills that should make any potential owner seriously think about bringing one into their homes. They're very distrusting of strangers and form extreme bonds with their families and show this love with extreme levels of protection. Now, intelligence and trainability is interesting for both dogs as both are incredibly intelligent, but we'll start with the Bauble, who is a keen, tireless worker. This enjoyment of work does make them fairly easy to train if you can harness this desire to work. However, they are independent thinkers and their extreme levels of protective instincts will often override any obedience should they deem a threat and will often act how they deem best, which can be a huge issue in the wrong environment. The Connie Corso can excel at obedience work. They have a real eagerness to please and far less independent than the Bauble, which makes training a breeze and which is why they are fast becoming one of the most commonly used personal protection dogs. The only real downside is they do take quite a long time to mature, often upwards of four years. So you have to stay very consistent and patient longer than with some other breeds, including the Bauble, who tends to mature at the usual two years of age upwards. Now, in terms of exercise and mental stimulation requirements, they're pretty similar. Both love to work, which means you must, must work on mentally stimulating them every day through training and interactive games to ensure they don't become bored. They both do require quite high levels of exercise as well. Not quite like Malinois or Shepherd levels, but you do need a good 45 minute to 60 minute walk twice a day to make sure they're calm and content at home. Now you can kick top left to see all of my contests in my current 32 breed knockout tournament to determine the ultimate guard dog breed for first time owners where both the Connie Corso and the Bauble are competing. And don't forget to check out FenrirCanineProducts.com where we make the world's leading canine products with zero compromises, perfect for glorious breeds like the Connie Corso and the Bauble.